Hello and welcome to Designer by Designer, ILD's new series of one-on-one -on -one interviews with and by lighting designers around the world. My name is Yali To, ILD, CLD. I am the IALD Southeast Asia Coordinator, and I am joined by Beatrice Berton Lee, Junior ILD, the coordinator from the UK region. Together, we are excited to welcome you to the ninth interview in this series with Chayo Kiranatawa, ILD, CLD, and Maida Hot, Associate ILD. Before we begin, we would like to thank our sponsors. The Designer by Designer series is made possible through the generous support of our platinum level sponsors, Axis Lighting, Cooper Lighting, Lutron Electronics, Lumen Power. Our gold level sponsors include Lumini and our silver level sponsors. Today's interview is being broadcast on Zoom and is being recorded and will be available later to view on YouTube. Chayot and Maida will be happy to answer questions at the end of the interview. So if you are watching with us on Zoom, please use the Q&A option throughout the interview. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Chayot Kirana Tawat and Maida Hawk for the live interview of the ILD Designer by Designer. Thank you, Yali. Hi, everyone. My name is Chayot Kirana Tawat and Today, I am glad to be here again on the other side of the table to interview Maida Hot from ILD UK. Hi, Maida, how are you? Hi, Chad, how are you doing? I'm good. Okay, I think before we start with some interview, we can have a little icebreaker questions. And then after that, we can go into deeper questions. So, I will be giving you two choices and maybe you can choose the one that you prefer. For example, teamwork or solo? Teamwork. Cool, me too. How about white light or color light? Oh, white light. <laughs> That's no surprise, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and wine or beer? Wine. Sorry, beer drinkers. <laughs> uh, and day or night? Uh, day, I think. Oh. Older without that. <laughs> and <laughs> day, day, day. I prefer night, but day is also cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And how about light or shade? Oh, that's a tough one, actually. Uh, I like both. I mean, you can't appreciate light without shade. So I'd say 50-50. Uh, can I, is that my answer okay? Yeah, okay. okay. Take it. Actually, yeah, I like both too. <laughs> In order for us to get to, new, to know you a little bit better, can you please introduce yourself and where are you from and where are you now? Um, um, well, my name is Maida Hot. Uh, professional lighting consultant. Um, I'm based in the UK. Uh, I grew up, my, first, my adolescent life was a, from Croatia. Um, so um, I spent a nice time in South, Southern Europe, but um, UK uh, design work wise is much more exciting uh, for me at the time. Um, so I came here, um, Sort of quite young um, and uh, uh, my background is mixed um, it's a science and art so I've got a my first degree is in the science and uh, and then um, I went on to do uh, postgraduate studies in lighting and architecture so it's a bit mixed it's the same thing that you know the way the light is between science and art so um yeah so I'm in London right now that's where I'm sitting, <laughs> so um, yeah, and uh, you know, it's it's amazing to um, have the opportunity, obviously, to talk to everybody around the world, sort of no matter where anybody is. So. Okay, so since your background is mixed, 
I would like to learn a bit more. What did you want to be growing up when you were a kid? Did you want to be a lighting designer from the first place? Um, well, as everybody, uh, I want to be astronaut at the beginning. <laughs> so, but no, uh, sort of after that, uh, so a bit more seriously, I wanted to be fashion designer. And then, so I was making my clothes for long time and then and I discovered buildings and you know it's like I want to be an architect and then went into sciences and went full uh, circle into the lighting um, design so yeah it's a, it's a bit of a convoluted route. Is it a big difference between being a fashion designer and a lighting designer? Um, well, I think we're more privileged because, you know, the, the lighting is quite a versatile medium, but actually fashion design is also sort of quite, you can change things, I suppose. That's the common thing is you can change a perception. You can, I'm not saying fool, fool the eye, but, you know, the things is you can, the same way with lighting, you can show what you want to reveal and conceal. It's a similar thing with the clothes. Uh, I mean, by no means I would go back and, you know, not back, but like, um, I'm so pleased I'm a lighting designer, not a fashion designer, you think it's easier, but, um, you know, it, it, it's sort of principle of being able to change what you see, it's most exciting thing. Right, I can imagine. So now that you are in London, is there any special news there or? How is it going there, like the current situation and any news or how about the COVID situation there? Um, I think we are sort of coming out of it in a full force. Um, the, there are lots of um, events going on. I mean, uh, equation team, that's uh, the, uh, where I work is, is really full on into the different events. And we're really happy that, you know, you're, we're all back to doing things um, in the groups because seeing sort of mock-ups, seeing trials, seeing products, everything else is, is really, really uh, important. Um, and also conversing with the fellow designers, exchanging ideas and like in the person and having these offline chats and things. And, and I think, you know, coming out of, sort of not being able to see things in groups that means um now so people are more eager to sort of um i suppose organize the events and uh, and share what what the technological advances and and sort of ideas have, have been happening in the in the past um, couple of years but it's very buzzy exciting and i can see that all over the world and it, it's really really great uh, you know I can imagine for young designers coming out, you know, of, of school in the last couple of years, it must have been daunting, probably like lighting design is super, um, you know, could be super um, boring, but, you know, not now they can see that, you know, the world is your oyster. So really exciting. How do you feel? I mean, how was I like Singapore? I like Singapore. Ah, uh, yes, it's I like. So it's going on now. And actually last week I had the chance to go there to attend a talk. And also after that, I walked around the Marina Bay to explore some lighting installations. I think it was great. Yeah, so, and actually this weekend, Yali and I, we are going to have a talk there as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's really nice for us lighting designer to, to be able to meet in person because our job cannot be done without experiencing the real things. So yeah, I think it's great to have this kind of event. Mm, yeah, look forward to seeing the pictures. Uh, yeah. I can't visit this year. It stops the 26th of June, but look forward to seeing pictures. So, yeah, forward them to me, please. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so how about, how, how did you end up 
being a lighting designer and eventually having your own practice, is there any challenges or what is the best thing? Um, I think, uh, I, as, as I said, you know, I, I always had a passion about the design and buildings. And uh, um, I suppose, you know, I was, I was uh, fortunate enough to, to, to meet um, designers that, you know, in my early 20s, where they inspired me to take, you know, uh, further studies in lighting and also um, sort of engage in, in, in consultancies uh, doing that. And, and I think, uh, you know, lighting is a teamwork. It, it's, it needs a lot of passion but it's also a teamwork. Um, and I think that's, um, you know, that, that's the most important um, aspect. And, and I think, you know, I, I organically uh, went from working uh, for much, much bigger other practices and more multidisciplinary practices to having, um, being a, a sort of owner of the practice. Um, it was quite natural. It wasn't break of sort of, of in, in any way of like doing it sort of quickly or because of sort of in haste. I think, you know, that's something that I would always say to, to a, a designers, you know, the um, projects are slow process and, you know, sort of saying, oh, I don't like this and then sort of moving on very quickly stops you from having full experiences of what you do because sometimes the beginning of the project is, is not no indication what will end up as. And endurance um, is, and, and sort of like keeping attention, it, it's super important. So, you know, that's, that's how I ended up sort of, I suppose, slowly moving into my own practice in the last um, just over 10 years. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's been great. Lots of challenges, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always keeping everybody happy and motivated. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, we, we are as good as our last project. So, so that, that's a challenge, but you know, if you have a passion, I don't think it's a problem really. Yeah, I think passion is the key. <laughs> and apart from lighting design, fashion design, do you have any other hobbies? Um, well, I love skiing. Um, I, can, I spend time doing that as much as possible. Um, it's a bit limited in the UK, especially if you live in London. Uh, but if I wasn't a lighting designer, if, 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 you, if somehow I could erase that passion, I'd probably be in the mountains surrounded by snow all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, my, that's number two. You know? So that's, that, that's what I would do. But uh, um, yeah, I, I think uh, lighting prevails. But the, you know, the, the whole scenery of the, the white mountains and the snow and, and being sort of mm -hmm. a skiing is, is very, very attractive. So that's, uh, yeah, that's my passion number two. <laughs> And how do you keep yourself inspired? Um, I think, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're sort of expecting, I suppose, you know, to, um, by social media, I think, to sort of say, oh, you go get it. You have to be on the top of it all the time. I think we all sort of have a little bit of ups and downs and, you know, you, you go through the project, sometimes it's a tough time and you're doubting. But actually, what what I find is most inspiring is is walking through uh, big cities, and and like just experiencing the environment, people, um, you know, the buildings, and just I mean, we are very very lucky in London. You just walk out of the door, and you know, you walk through the city, and you get inspired by lights, by shade, by you know, all these things. And, and you're just looking at the, you know, all the, the, the interesting things and you can always find something that, you know, somebody's done really well or maybe not, or, you know, you get ideas. It's just as soon as you step outside. And um, that's why I like traveling as well because you, you get inspiration. Um, what about you? Do you see yeah. a lot of that? Yeah. I also like traveling. So 
before the pandemic, I used to travel a lot. I went to London once as well. I think it's a nice city. I explored the nightlife there. It's quite vibrant and yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was so excited exploring everywhere in the city. Yeah, I also so. attended a workshop in Shoreditch. It's about the uh, graffiti. So we went around in the Shoreditch area exploring the graffiti out there. And then after the session, I had the chance to attend the workshop to try making the graffiti myself yeah uh, all right is that who's what? doing all these things around london now <laughs> <laughs> new banksy yeah <laughs> yeah well so apart from london where do you usually travel um well one go-to place to see my wider family would be Croatia, but uh, otherwise um, anywhere really. Um, so um, I, I love to, to see everything. So uh, I mean, it will probably in the summer would be some of the island somewhere, but um, cities are a big, um, big thing. Uh, every city, as I said, you know, it's inspiration. And uh, um, I think my family sort of slightly hates the fact that I'm sort of a bit nosy going around the city and sort of looking and taking photos and things. But, you know, I, I think that's something that they adopted too. So um, it's, I suppose, anywhere is good. Um, mm. just, uh, just sort of seeing new people, new buildings. Yeah, I agree. And do you have any favorite project so far that you have done and what did you like most about it? Um, my favorite, well, it's quite hard to say what the favorite project is because I wouldn't want to sort of say something wasn't, was or wasn't important. Uh, but I suppose one of the projects were well, we were quite engaged without anybody else on the board. And it was quite a large project, was lighting this um, half a kilometer of the, the building facade in the very center of the London. And it was made up of uh, like 60 different buildings of different styles, some of them historic. And the client came to us first. And so that was a difference, you know, it wasn't an art piece, you know, to say, oh, could, could we have a luminaire made? custom or you know the, the, could we have this light art it, it was actually the building project but we were asked first and the brief was like you know this this is run down it's in a great place but it looks run down nobody wants to be there shop there and uh, we need to make it work we need to make it alive um, mm. so we did you know and at the end of the project you know we worked hard we experimented with a client we made them you know, we, we, we educated how they, the light is seen, you know, why you don't want colored light, what's the difference between cool, warm light, why you would use cool here, warm there, why we should spend the money on a dynamic light, you know. Um, and, um, and, you know, at the end, they said, wow, they put it on the first page of their website and they said, you know, um, we would have even paid twice this money for the installation because we got so much out of it you know people are taking photos in front and you know all of a sudden we can you know do whatever we like with the with the retail and, and build and it, it was just uh, just amazing to have that feedback you know and not and only having to rely on our own skills i'm not saying that everybody else's are not in, of course you know it's a teamwork but it was just you know, the fact that sometimes light on its own, as the client said, in very inexpensive way, made a huge difference. Um, and so when somebody says, yeah, you're getting lighting consultant, that must be sort of project where they can afford it. I would probably say, can you not afford to have lighting consultant? You know, is it something that, you know, you can actually allow yourself to drop? So, so that, that, was, that was a nice thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds like a great project. I I want to visit it now. Okay, when you come over, yeah, take you there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that will be great. A deal. And for working on a lighting design project, which is the process that you like the most? Um, well, concept stage is very nice because like anything is possible well, within the um, realms of the project um, extent. But uh, I think besides concept phase, commissioning, the final stages are really important. That's where you see, you know, all, you're almost there, but there's a lot to tweak. Everybody thinks, you know, almost everybody's gone from the project because, you know, even architects have done, but we still need to go and tweak things, aim it, fix it, set it up. And, and that's where, you know, it's like you, have, you go once and you go twice. And, you know, it's like until you perfect it. And, and so I think, that, yeah, the front and back is sort of our, the, the favorite one. Right. And when you have, when you feel like you have some challenges working on a project, how do you, what is the way that you usually deal with it? Um, do you mean challenges sort of on the project itself, uh, on the lighting project? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think uh, the well, I normally try to, if there are issues with somebody or something, I'll try to sort of zoom out of the, you know, the problem and uh, try to sit in the chairs of people that are involved, you know, outside of our company. And um, I suppose it's just sort of looking at things in a constructive way, using all your skills and experience and just communicating with people. Mm. I think our job is to communicate what we do within our company, you know, within our internal team, and then externally, you have to manage people's expectations, manage the process, um, sort of have like a plan and talk to everybody, communicate, explain. And that goes a very long way uh, because, you know, um, the problems are typically caused by you know, small things that sort of maybe got out of control because no, typically people weren't communicating. So I think sort of being having pragmatic approach and communicating and really doing your job properly all the time, the ten, you know, keeping attention to detail, that's the way to sort of um, get over the challenges So and, and any issues. So yeah, a lot of talk and communications. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Mm. And uh, so as a lighting designer, how does the light mean to you? And how can you explain to other persons that what lighting designers do and what is the importance of the lighting design? Yeah, that's a good one. I, lots of my friends that are not in design haven't got a clue what I do. Uh, they think I design a lampshade. Yeah. I mean, even after 30 years, they still think that. I mean, they, they pretend they don't, but I think they do. So, yeah, if I, if I, so that's the, you know, if they're to listen, I, I think it's a, um, it's interesting, interesting thing. I mean, most of lighting designers would always tell you, you know, of course, light is everything, you know, it's source of light. You wouldn't be able to see anything without light. How comes it's not important when mm. you, you know, think about people's lives, but everybody goes around without thinking about it. You know, it's just a given. Um, so if anybody was interested in what I do, or if it's sort of a, a student of architecture, um, I, I do lectures um, at a couple of universities um, in the UK for students of architecture. And it, it's really nice to uh, give a bit of an eye opener uh, with a first uh, explanation of how we see the light, you know, that what you see is reflected light. And that's how you explain um, 
to a fellow uh, design team members, such as architects or interior designers or landscape architects, that you see reflected light. And that's why we're so boring asking about what is the finish of this material. When they're only thinking about white box, we start asking, so do you think it's dark? Do you think it's texture? Do you think it's light color? Um, they, they then understand why we are asking all these questions so early on to, to understand the space, how the eye travels from one place to another. And, and you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's a cliche, but somebody's saying painting with light. It's really using this reflectance properties. Um, so if anybody was willing to listen, you know, not my friends necessarily, but, you know, the, the interested, um, it, it is all about the, the way psychology of seeing and the way we see the light. And what we do is manipulate that, um, you know, manipulate in a positive way. We sort of play with it and look about, look around for a, um, a ways to compose effectively the scene um, and to do it in an aesthetic or dynamic way, whatever that is, we, we, we sort of end up giving that other layer and um you know it, it, it is something that um is is very versatile but um as i said if if normal people were to listen <laughs> so that, that's hopefully the way one would explain uh, otherwise i'm happy you know if we finish the project and people would just say oh well, this is amazing i wouldn't go and dig saying oh what do you think about light because I've heard it so many times when you say, so what do you think about light? Somebody would say, what do you mean? What is light? And look at, is that shape, you know, do you mean that light, you know, that angle poise or something like that? So um, it's, so you better not ask if, if it's nice and it's pleasant and it's thrilling, you know, just don't dig. <laughs> right. Do you have any suggestions or tips for young lighting designers or any other persons who wish to become a lighting designer? Yeah, um, well, as you said, you need to have a passion for light um, and to discover more. Um, and um, I, I, I think it's, it's sort of understanding the first principles. It, it's really important. But then, um, I mean, I think a biggest tip is not to rely on the computer modeling and calculations to, obviously that's vital, but to do a lot of modeling, um, uh, the scale models, um, physical models, um, experiment with light. I think that it cannot be replaced with anything else. Um, and that is something that, you know, um, we're all sort of very uh, now versed into just looking at a computer and you know, of course everything can be modeled, but that sort of virtual reality still can't show you what your eye sees. There's so much that I can catch that your you know, computer screen can't. And as a lighting designer, that's a key thing. Um, just understanding the light and experimenting. I mean, I was fortunate sort of long time ago to, when we started to do a lot of when we explain you know when I was uh, working on a, a models for the designing with the daylight and uh, sort of looking at some sort of the projects where the daylight was key in terms of the how you trickle the daylight in space qualitative quantitative models were were key and I think the computers would never show that sort of range of scenarios and, and experiences um, and, and the other thing is, as lighting designer, one has to pay attention to, to detail. I mean, detail is everything. I mean, to, to sort of, to be very, uh, it's not, um, I suppose the word used in, in a negative way, but you know, one has to be quite pedantic about uh, sort of all the details and, um, and really, you know, from the, the word go till, till the end, it's all about the detail and everything else will fall into place. So yeah, it's a fun ride ahead. It's just sort of these sort of things to fall into place and um, yeah, never trust the computer models. <laughs> so you always have an idea what you're going to get before you 
press uh, the sort of calculation button. So, of course, both are important. I mean, don't get me wrong, mm. but yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, never just one, really. Yeah, true. I think the best thing to experiment lighting is to see the physical model. Mm. And you also, you mentioned about daylight. Do you usually implement daylight in your projects? Um, we do, yes. I mean, in some instances, we are appointed to be daylight designers, to work alongside architects, uh, shaping up the building and uh, uh, advising on the size of fenestration. Um, sometimes it's all, almost like a done deal that they shaped up the building and now we're talking about detailing it more for qualitative rather than quantitative aspect. Uh, but in the daylight, um, as in generally in lighting, but especially with daylight, qualitative uh, is, is super important. I mean, you can have an abundance of it and you know, it, it all depends how um, sort of it falls into the composition of the space. Uh, so sometimes, especially in urban environment, you can never have abundance of daylight unless it's a, it's a roof light. Um, so really um, sort of looking at that qualitative aspect about the, the finishes, about trickling it within the space, having that borrowed light, not relying on it in, in a sort of um, quantity way, but um, just, just really um, sort of having that contact with outside um, and then combining it with a sort of artificial lighting. It's something we, we do um, a lot. I mean, it's a sort of routine aspect of our design is looking at the sort of that 24 hour life of the building uh, rather than just when it gets dark. Right. So now in London, is there any lighting trends that are like, what is the topic that people talk about the most now? Um, well, there's so many things, I suppose. That there's a lot of talk about, you know, the importance of the lighting controls, uh, mm. because that's been, you know, the vast amount of the opportunities there in terms of the different control systems, you know, whether it's radio control or hardwire. Um, and that's very exciting. And, you know, integrating, making it very personal. Um, it, it's a uh, it's a key aspect and there's so many exciting opportunities. Uh, I suppose it's all about people's preferences and, you know, using your mobile phone to do everything. It's, uh, it's, it, it's really the way everything is going. Um, but also there is a discussion that's been going on for the last few years. And I don't think we, we, we saw the end of it. It's about, it, it is discussion about lighting and well-being, and the, you know, whether, um, the circadian lighting's been sort of talked about and sold as such just to sell rather than to actually benefit, make a, make a, a sort of visible benefit. Um, so there's a lot of misconception. And I think it's, it's one of those things where uh, lighting designers are a bit dismayed that it's being sort of used in all sorts of ways. Um, and, um, and I think, you know, there's a little way to go to actually explain to to our clients that we always done light light for well-being uh, since you know for for decades uh, it's all about people and you know them feeling good uh, and the, um, that you know whether you call it circadian lighting or not and how you sort of um, so sort of brand it it's it's irrelevant mm -hmm. it's about how you need the project brief and all the the requirements for the, that best for people of that building or for that project. Um, so yeah, I think there's a sort of a two things, te technology and controls and, and sort of these uh, sort of, uh, I suppose, you know, the, the selling points uh, sort of used uh, wise, widely that um, we are all sort of trying to educate the sort of general public not to be fooled by <laughs> sort of, uh -huh. you know, uh, so all the products that are around there. Mm. Yeah, I think it's similar all over the world. Like 
I think it's the same here as well. So previously we have some projects which is like high tech, like those high tech gadget oriented. And then after a few years, I think people tend to be more aware of health and well-being. And yeah, I think it's similar here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a very, a very good session. Thank, thank you, Maida and Chayot for this insightful conversation. It was very cool and rich. Uh, be sure to join us again for the next Designer by Designer interview on the 30th of June, when Maida will be interviewing Marcel Dion from the IELD Toronto chapter. The registration to join us on Zoom will open uh, very soon. And of course, you can always uh, watch any of the designer by designer interviews and all of the ILD video content on the ILD YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe, not to miss any further talk. Uh, thanks again to our sponsors and today's audience for watching. Stay tuned and see you next time. Thank you.